Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Genuine APBT. On today's episode, I want to cover what you should know about a genuine APBT breeder. Since the episode is about pit bull breeders, I think it's important to differentiate the dogman and the fancier from the breeder. To look at the dogman, we have to do it historically and we have to do it presently. But before we do that, I just want to put out a little disclaimer again, because it's necessary. We know that uh, the media and a lot of people hate the American Pit Bull Terrier, and they hate the American Pit Bull Terrier owners and people that have knowledge in the breed. And so because of that, we have to let everyone know that we do not condone, we do not practice, we do not encourage, we do not advise anything having to do with the legal practices of dog fighting, matching, or anything connected to those things. But historically, a dogman was known as somebody that had a skill, a particular skill, in conditioning a dog. And the conditioning was always geared towards the optimum performance in combat. Historical dogmen were extremely efficient and knowledgeable with everything that had to do with the physical hands-on conditioning of a dog. The actual conditioning portion of it, the feeding, the rest, everything that led up to preparing for that day. I believe that today's breeders can also be considered breeders slash dogmen. They have to have the same skills as the historical dogman, even though the purpose is different and the, the reasons why they're training and conditioning and resting and everything that goes into the preparation of a dog are obviously different. Back then, like we said, it was for combat, it was for fighting, the pit competition, contest. And now it is for another type of competition. It could be for confirmation. It could be for weight pulling, wall climbing, treadmill racing, everything else that is legal and that is sponsored by uh, registries. The fancier is a person that would be best described as someone that has a strong interest in the breed and doesn't necessarily have the same knowledge as a dogman or a breeder, but they love the breed, they're committed to the breed, uh, they take well care of their dogs, and they are really, really good ambassadors at presenting these dogs in a good light with their neighbors in their communities, and they are extremely important in this time, in this uh, decade. The reason I'm saying that is because If as a dog breeder or dog breeder slash dogman, all we do is keep the dogs, we maintain them well, we condition them well for a good competition, nowadays legal competition, but we fail to expose them to the general public, I think we are doing the dog a disservice. I think we are keeping the breed too underground and that is not something that we want to do nowadays we want to take the dogs out and show everybody that they are intelligent they are trainable they are loving actually to children and most humans all humans and that they are absolutely manageable i would encourage most breeders and people that have the american pit bull terrier to be like the fancier or the person that has them as a good pet owner. Expose your dogs, take them out, show your dogs, walk your dogs in public. Do not just have them chained up. It is much more active, proactive actually in the preservation of our breed. And it's something that I encourage everyone to be active in. So if you're somebody that doesn't breed the dogs and doesn't have many dogs, you only have one dog, but you are a great fancier, a great pet owner, then more power to you. What you are doing, if you're taking your dog out and you're exposing them to the majority of people, 
you're actually doing a lot more for the dog than the person that's fooling themselves and has a lot of dogs and is not doing much for the breed except breeding the dogs, just producing dogs. Something I'd like to clear up is when I'm talking about a fancier of a American pit bull terrier, I'm talking about either breeders, dogmen, or fanciers of genuine APBTs, registered APBTs, purebreds with uh, pedigrees and lineage and knowledge of the dogs of the past. I am not talking about unpapered dogs. So let's get back to what you should know about the American Pit Bull Terrier breeders. First is, let's identify a genuine breeder. Uh, a genuine breeder has to have good knowledge of dogs in general, not just the American Pit Bull Terrier, but canines in general. And this can mean vaccines, feeding, uh, supplements, vitamins, shelter, housing, managing the dogs, etc. Keep an eye out or be alert when you're talking to a breeder. If the person is not knowledgeable in these things, uh, maybe it's somebody that you need to be a little cautious with. Doesn't necessarily mean you discount him as a breeder, but be a little cautious. He should know these things in a general sense. Now, in a more specific sense, a breeder of the American Pit Bull Terrier should know the history of the dog. And what I mean by that is he should know that these dogs were historically used for combat. The reason that is so crucial is because if the breeder doesn't know that, he will not be able to pass on good information as far as management to the people that are buying his puppies. It's extremely necessary to pass on that information because it allows you to understand what caliber of dog you have in your hands. If you do not understand that from the beginning, you are just setting yourself up for extreme trouble. You need to actually understand that and have done your research prior to contacting a breeder, but it is the breeder's responsibility to bring that up. Now, having said that, it is very important that the breeder is very careful on how he brings up the subject of historical dogfighting. Like I said before, it is for historical purposes only and for instructional information. It is never, ever to promote, to engage in, and to encourage anyone to even remotely start getting interested in that as far as a current practice. I'm even extremely careful on this channel with some of the comments and emails that I've received People have asked questions that are hard to identify the intentions behind them. They have asked questions about gameness, and they're just relentless. They want to keep talking about it. They want to keep asking, what is the best way to test a dog for gameness? And there's plenty of videos out there that explain that there is no legal way to test historical gameness. The closest you're going to get is to hog hunt with the dog and you will see the intensity and the willingness to keep pushing beyond exhaustion or beyond uh, physical challenges of your dog. That's it. So I'm extremely careful. I will not answer any silly questions that are uh, proposed or asked in these comments. The breeder should also have a general knowledge of the dogs or the breeders that are in uh, the dog's pedigree further back. I wouldn't require the breeder to have specific knowledge on every dog and every breeder or be able to tell me why these breeders put these dogs together way back in the genealogy. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's more important that the breeder knows the close-up generations with more detail. If he does, then that will allow you to get a better idea of what the traits are your dog might have will look like, what the probability of those traits are. I would even suggest buying a pup from a breeder that has hands-on experience with a couple generations back from that litter than buying a pup from a breeder that can't really tell you what the parents of those dogs were really like. 
believe me, there's some out there. They will sell you puppies and they say that the mother and the father are not on the premises. And I always get a little sketchy when I hear things like that because you're really taking a shot in the dark. But if you're able to buy the dog from a breeder that can legitimately either show you the grandparents and the parents and then explain to you how the good positive traits like temperament, health, and intelligence uh, were seen or what kind of traits the dogs that produced your dog through, that's really, really good. Uh, Like I said, you're going to be ahead of the game on that because you'll be able to look forward to your puppy most likely having those same traits. This brings me to my next point. The breeder should not have a problem with you seeing and spending time with the sire and the dam. I absolutely understand that there is a lot of thievery in these dogs, depending on what part of the country you're from or where you're at. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the buyer of the pups cannot see the parents. It could be at a remote location and you offer the opportunity for the people to get a good idea of what the parents are all about. I think in the last 25 to 30 years, I have not owned any dogs that I have not had firsthand experience with the parents and even the grandparents. Uh, Not all of the dogs that I've owned in the last 30 years, I've seen the grandparents, but I've definitely seen the sire and the, the dam. And so it's given me the ability to get a good picture of what the dog is going to be like. I would always be a little bit weary about somebody that denies me the opportunity to see the dogs. And if that's the case, it could be a legitimate reason. And that little bump on the road can be easy to get over with a simple explanation. But in most cases, it's it's a good question to ask a breeder. Are the parents on the premises and am, am I going to be able to spend some time with them? A breeder should also be able to tell you specifically why he bred that sire to that dam. There has to be specific reasons. There has to be specific traits that he was trying to uh, multiply or develop. And he should be able to explain to you what he was trying to achieve with that particular litter. All of these points that I've covered so far should be leading up to a really comfortable experience when you're purchasing an American Pit Bull Terrier from a legitimate breeder. These are the beginning points of a good relationship. It should be an enjoyable uh, experience. It should be the beginning of a good relationship with that breeder. A good breeder is going to keep in touch with you. He's going to want some periodic reports on his dog's I know a lot of breeders that still have connections with their dogs through their whole life. They text people. They used to write before the texting and used to make phone calls. But it's extremely important that the breeder has a continued interest in the litter even after it's gone. He's not making decisions for the dogs or anything like that. And he's not being unnecessarily nosy. But he is keeping an interest in the dogs that he produced and he still loves those dogs because they come from dogs that he loved and they were produced by him or her. So that's always a good thing. Don't be offended when the breeder wants to keep in touch and wants to make sure that you're doing right by the dogs. I know a lot of breeders and it's something that I would practice. Uh, If you are not able to keep the dog, you could bring it right back to the breeder. And the breeder will take it back. The breeder's not going to pay you back for the dog, but the breeder will find that dog a good home or he will keep the dog himself. That's a great sign of a great breeder. And like I said, the experience has to be enjoyable from the beginning, from the initial phone call or email or text, whatever it is, however you communicate, it has to start off on the right foot. The breeder could never be pushy. The breeder has to be honest and transparent. And if it's a good breeder, he's going to be open about what he's trying to achieve every time he breeds. He's not going to tell you that he has the best dogs in the world or he has the dogs of the century or that he's the only breeder on the face of the planet that's 
kept the original American Pit Bull Terrier for the last two decades. Look, I've said it before in other videos, when you hear people speak like this, unless you want to get taken and unless you want to pay ridiculous amounts for dogs that are not any more special than any other well-bred dog, don't buy from breeders like this. When somebody tries to tell you that they're the absolute best, but doesn't have a reason why, they're not the best. And like I've said in other videos, you know, that's a very subjective statement. You cannot say that you're the best because you might be the best in your own eyes and that's usually what it is. Just be honest. You want to deal with an honest breeder that tells you, hey, look, these are the bloodlines. These are the last two generations before the litter. This is most likely what you're going to get. Enjoy your dog. I'm here for you for any questions that you might have, any advice, any help. And I'm here for you if you can't keep the dog, if circumstances change in your life and you have to move to an apartment or somewhere where you just can't keep the dog, hey, talk to me. We'll either place the dog in a good home or you can always return the dog back to me. That is an absolute good breeder. And before I forget, I want to mention something that I think it's beneficial for all of us to know. Breeders are extremely necessary. Good breeders are necessary. And not all breeders are puppy peddlers. A puppy peddler can be somebody that sells one dog or five dogs a year or even one dog. He could doesn't even have to be a puppy. It could be an adult dog. A puppy peddler is somebody that's trying really hard to push their dogs on you. It makes it a hard sale. Has to spend a bunch of time convincing you. I know the breeders that I've known in the past are just excellent. They show you the litter. They sit back. They don't talk much. They just let you enjoy the dogs. And you pick out the dog that you see fit for your use. But a puppy peddler is not always a breeder that sells a lot of dogs. I think there's a lot of great breeders that have tons of dogs. I mean, if you sell 500 dogs a year, but you do it in the way that I've described a good breeder to be, you're a good breeder. You're not a peddler. I think in our community, we like dealing in generalities. We, we like saying things with, without specific understanding of things. And we say, oh, well, that's a, that's a puppy peddler because he sells a lot of dogs. Not necessarily. You can sell one or two dogs and you can be a peddler if you're not the kind of breeder that I was talking about in this video. So don't get it confused. I don't think the volume of dogs identifies a peddler. It's who you sell to and how you sell it and how versed you are and how experienced you are and how much interest you have in bettering the breed, loving the breed, and preserving the breed. That's the difference between a peddler and a good breeder. The last thing I want to talk about is a good breeder should always be able to tell you why he will not sell you a dog. My next video is going to be about that. That is a topic that needs to be talked about with a little more detail, so we will leave that for the next video. But don't get offended. If you call a breeder and he speaks to you over the phone and he's asking you key questions, and at the end of those questions he decides that he cannot sell you a dog, most of the time, 99% of the time, he's doing you a favor and he's doing the breed a favor. But there's options, so don't don't feel discouraged if you've never owned these dogs and it's getting harder and harder to talk to genuine breeders of these dogs and you just haven't been able to find a breeder that'll sell you a dog. There's a way around that, but it's the correct way. And that's what I'm going to talk about in my next video. Please remember that the dogs that I'm talking about here, I'm talking about genuine American pit bull terriers, papered, pedigreed history, lineage. They are all registered with a legitimate registry. I am not talking about dogs that are not registered. It's important. We've touched it in the other videos. Why is it important? Because the pedigree is going to show you what you're going to compare your dog to. We don't want to beat, beat a dead horse on this, but we do have to bring it up because it seems like the YouTube community doesn't understand that. Uh, we know that the pedigree doesn't make the dog, but the pedigree describes what kind of dog you're hoping to have. 
If you don't understand that, then, well, it's good that you don't have a pedigree dog and hopefully people are not buying mutts from you. Uh, please only buy good pedigree dogs from good breeders. The backyard breeder doesn't mean that the person is breeding in their backyard. There's many legitimate good breeders that are breeding from their backyard, from their yard. That's not what a backyard breeder is. It's more of what opposite of what we described in the video. That's a backyard breeder. Somebody that has no knowledge, somebody that doesn't know how to care for the dog, somebody that won't keep in touch with you, uh, somebody that could care less who's buying the dogs from them, somebody that all they want is the money. Uh, that's a backyard breeder. It doesn't matter what your channel looks like or your website looks like or anything like that. You're a backyard breeder if you're just selling to anyone that can come up with the money that you're asking for your dogs. So don't take any pride on preserving the dogs. doesn't matter if you've been in the dogs 30, 40, 50 years. It doesn't matter. If all you're doing is pushing the dogs and pushing the dogs to the general public, uh, you're a peddler. You're not a legitimate breeder. You can have experience in different things in the past, but you're not a good breeder. You're not. So the accolades that you think you have, you don't. You're just propping them up there and you're patting yourself on the back. So if it stings and it sounds really personal, well, good. I hope it does. Um, all right, guys. I hope this video was informative. And like always, know them, love them, and raise them responsibly.